Our town sure has grown over the years. And with that growth, we've seen an increase in population. And with the increase in population, we've also seen an increase in burglaries and other crimes. Our citizens looking to provide a safe environment for their families and their businesses have looked to alarm systems. Alarm systems seem to help. They bring a problem of their own, false alarms. The first year we began to count, we counted over 6,000 false alarms. So we took some steps to reduce the false alarm problem, only to find out the next year it had actually increased. After some further research, we found that simply counting false alarms is not really a good way to measure your success. We found about something called the false alarm factor. Come with me over to our classroom and let me explain to you how this works. In the late 1990s, the alarm industry and the International Association of Chiefs of Police worked together to try to reduce false alarms in several states. The results of this study were published in a report known as the Model States Report. From the Model States Report, we found there was a need for a uniform method to measure false alarms and the successfulness of various methods used to reduce these false alarms. The method is called the false alarm factor. To use this method, you must first know how many monitored alarm systems are in your area, which is why our jurisdictions now require monitored alarm systems to be registered. Once we have a count of alarm systems, we begin to keep track of alarm dispatches and how many of those dispatches were due to false alarms. And then to calculate our false alarm factor, we simply divide our false alarm dispatches by the number of registered alarm systems. Shown here are our estimated numbers from our first year. As you can see, we had a false alarm factor of 0.6. And here are our numbers from the following year. And just as we've seen in the past, the number of false alarms actually increased. However, since the number of registered alarm systems also increased, our false alarm factor actually decreased, telling us we are having some success in managing our false alarm problem. So as you can see, before you start a false alarm reduction program, it's important that you know how to measure your success. I trust you now know how to calculate your false alarm factor, and you will continue to work to lower your number and be part of the alarm industry false alarm reduction effort. I thank you for your time.